hot take here, I think that there should only be one ranked mode. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another live commentary because right now I'm currently on vacation but I still want to provide you guys some awesome content. So in this video we're going to be talking about Halo Infinite's multiplayer. We're going to be talking about the competitive side of things, the social side of things, the customization as well as microtransactions and how it's going to be a bit of a shock for Halo fans for the traditional experience. So if you guys like these kind of discussion commentary videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay updated with everything going on as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, Make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content. Yo, so the main thing I want to talk about in today's video, guys, is Halo Infinite's multiplayer, right? It needs to have a good multiplayer for this game to survive, right? Or at least for Halo Infinite, I mean. And it seems like they're kind of starting to kind of put things together for the multiplayer. I would say probably the multiplayer is the thing we know the least about Halo Infinite right now. We know a good amount about the campaign, but when it comes to the multiplayer, like all we know that there's sprint, possibly. <laughs> you know, or if there's a way to possibly mix it up and stuff, but uh, the main thing I want to talk about is really just like the multiplayer as a whole, what makes it, gr what could make it great, what could make it suffer, and also what 343 can do to kind of, you know, keep agile enough to where they can meet player demands properly. I'm playing Halo 3 just because I think everyone just kind of recognizes that Halo 3 is universally the most well-liked Halo game out there. I mean, it's certainly the most most played on MCC right now, and it's my personal favorite Halo game as well. So, uh, a lot of factors going for it. And I have a feeling that like 343 is going to be pulling a lot of influence when it comes to uh, the multiplayer gameplay mechanics. Oh god, this guy is spawning right behind me! Oh, we still got him. The clutch plays, brothers. Another one, dude. We start this string. We start this commentary off with the killing spree. Let's go, guys. We can go. So. I, I know a big thing a lot of people are probably concerned about is the competitive side of things because competitive was a huge focus when it comes came to Halo 5's multiplayer experience. Uh, if I remember correctly, Halo 5 didn't even launch with anything social. It was all ranked. Now I do believe that uh, I think even some of like the social rank social modes actually have a stricter matching than the actual some of the ranked modes in Halo 5. So it's all kind of more of a facade when it comes to like the type of players you play against. I would love to see 343 put a bigger emphasis on social, but also a bigger emphasis on competitive as well. Uh, just because we've traditionally we've had like a really wide range of ranked modes within Halo, which worked out really well back in the day during Halo 3 and stuff like that, right? We have one guy left. Wow, we just came in and completely dominated these guys. All right, new game. So what I meant by like doubling down on competitive and social game modes when it already does both, right? For is saying that we need to have, I think, just consolidate down the playlist in a way. So, you know, traditionally we've had like rank Slayer, rank SWAT, rank this, rank that. Personally, hot take here, I think that it should only be one ranked mode, and that is the HCS professional settings mode for rank settings in Halo. Because, you know, I've played Halo throughout the years, trust me, I've been playing since 2001. And whenever I wanted to play a ranked version of Halo multiplayer, that I was playing, I wanted to play like the competitive settings because those are the most fair, those are the most balanced. And it would make, to me, it just makes sense if you're going to try hard in the game or care about ranking up in the game rather than just spending some time and just playing. You'd want to play like on a fair, even setting. So then like it was an even experience to enjoy so that their gameplay shine rather than having a quirky gameplay mechanics essentially like in MCC right here you have Halo 3 Hardcore but then you also have Halo 3 uh, right, Team Slayer which is just ranked Team Slayer which I feel is a little redundant and it kind of detracts people away I think from playing on the uh oh gosh oh no <laughs> dig it the guy had the right idea right before I did from playing the ranked modes and getting into the HCS side of things because that's what the big emphasis of Halo 5 was, was the HCS side of things. And to kind of not funnel people into that game mode, I feel it's just, uh, it's just, I don't think it was the right play, to be honest, in my opinion. Oh my God, these guys came prepared to play in social. My, yeah, got that kill with that grenade. There we go. Add one to the pineapple party. It would also just put a bigger emphasis on the social side of things, right? Because if every game mode is social, then you can ma do matchmaking better as well. It's a little bit easier to match it all up just because dude, they're needing me from like God knows where. 
and then getting sight from God knows where. But like all the popular game modes in Halo 5, right, were all the social modes. Like even like ranked team Slayer was even that popular in Halo 5. Social Slayer was rather popular. I mean, uh, Menke would normally would put out like a monthly update of just saying the most popular players out there. Bigger emphasis on social. I mean, the most popular game mode consistently in Halo 5 is Super Fiesta. And so I think this kind of tells you an example of like what people kind of want out of their Halo games. Obviously, the population of Halo 5 isn't a complete representation of the Halo community as a whole. You know, just because the, the smaller group of people playing Halo compared to like say an MCC probably. Here, I gotta creep up on these boys here. Am I? Gonna drop down. Here, he's right here. He just jumped off the map. <laughs> plays, the plays. Oh my God, the plays, boys. Oh my gosh. Power position taken back. This is mine, boys. But how do you guys feel about, you know, ranked modes, social modes in in, uh, in Halo? Do you mainly play social? Do you mainly play ranked? It seems like it's kind of like one or the other. I mean, I personally like to do a little bit of both, but that's just me. Depends on the situation and kind of who we're playing with and stuff like that. Another thing that's really important about the multiplayer for Halo Infinite is being agile. What I mean by being agile is you need to be able to meet the demand of your players very quickly, way faster than ever before. Because previously, you know, it was just like big updates is all we ever had when it came to Halo's, you know, updates when it comes to patches and things like that. Now, 343 does recognize this and they are setting themselves up to be able to update Halo Infinite as qu quickly as possible when needed. Which is going to be super important because when the game releases, there are going to be balance issues. There are going to be things that are going to be overpowered. There's probably going to be things that are going to break the game for the multiplayer side of things. And they need to be able to agile, be agile with their development and be able to on within a month fix something that's an issue or at least when it's broken be able to fix it again kind of thing kind of like remember what with the halo 5 battle rifle right where it started out you know pretty good people said it was a little overpowered and you know i, I can see their point of view on that certainly i get this guy with the explosion there we go but when they fixed it it made the battle rifle pointless right and then when they fixed it again it was just bad like it wasn't like terrible like it was or unplayable but it just wasn't what it needed to be. And they had to wait on these large scale patches to be able to update Halo 5 properly. But obviously, can't wait. Because patching games is expensive. Because you have to go through these certification processes because that's what Xbox and consoles generally have to do, which costs a lot of money to patch the game. They want to make sure that when they do patches and updates for your game, that it's, you know, a big update. That's why you always see it like, but recently, I think uh, they've kind of found workarounds through that within the gaming community, with at least the development side of things, where they can keep games up to date without having to go to, like these big official like patch updates, except for like new seasons and stuff like that. These guys are squirrely little boys because they are just only giving me like the tips of their heads. I put a bunch of shots in them, and then they just peek back around. Yeah, they're in straight communications with each other. Not making it easy for me. Yes, we finally got their sniper. Holy crap, dude, that took forever. Battle of attrition right there, that's what that was. We can grab that sniper real quick. And also with Halo Infinite's multiplayer, they need to cater to large-scale game mode fans and also the 4v4 fans as well. Because Halo is so many different things to so many different people that it's not just a game for one thing, right? And that's one of the difficulties that 343 has when it comes to developing a Halo game. Damn, Halo back at again with some more Heretic. Well, the rumors of like the BTB 2.0 mode that's been going around for Halo Infinite has me excited because I think it just kind of plays into more of what Halo has to offer. I think that's kind of like the philosophy a little bit with, with Halo Infinite. It's giving you more Halo that you could ever want from ever pretty much. Oh no, I got stuck in the face! We're negative one? How is that even possible? We're negative two? Bruh. Got you. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you guys. Oh my lord. So the big part about Halo has always been customization, especially in multiplayer side of things. And we do know that Halo Infinite's gonna have a lot of customization. And I think honestly, so much customization that you will probably not be able to unlock everything. I just think it's gonna be a big shock to a lot of Halo fans out there that you won't be able to earn everything in the game because there's gonna be so much stuff that you can pick up and earn or even buy, really, I'm sure as well, that this is going to be a bit of a mess, really. Like, I know this was actually a big issue with Gears of War 5's multiplayer, is that 
they show kind of it's like the sticker prices, right? Like, if you wanted to own every bit of customization within Gears of War 5, it would cost you $5,000 and stuff like that. And that's when you hear that, you're like, wow, they're completely nickel and dime in you. But really, the design of it is that you're not supposed to have everything. It's going to be a big shock for a lot of Halo players because they've kind of found with a lot of market research that most people that when they buy microtransactions for customizations, they don't like go into everything. They, you know, have their one or two spe or three like specific things that they like to utilize. And then they just kind of roll with that pretty much. But what they want to do is create so many different options for people that have, so they can have enough for that person, you know, one player to have their two or three favorite bits of customization. And to do that, there's gonna have to be a lot of it. And so that's gonna be a big shock for the Halo's multiplayer where, well, that guy just straight up just teleported. Uh, that you're not going to be able to have everything in the game. And I think it's something that I think people are probably starting to get used to a little bit more within the current gaming sphere or community as a whole, you know. But the customization looks great, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm super excited about it. The armor customization looks fantastic from the screenshots that we've seen. Uh, we've also seen a lot of stuff on the... A bit of, a bit of stuff on the armor coating as well. Uh, not a whole lot, but it does look promising but also does look a little concerning as well so it kind of depends exactly how 343 wants to go about uh, you know monetizing them making them earn content you can also earn within the game if you do certain tasks and stuff like that so there's a lot of different ways to go about doing it again we don't have the full story when it comes to it at first it sounds bad right being limited to an entire set of colors and textures that you want to utilize for your sport but also we don't know the full extent of how customizable that really is and how much, how much of a benefit it actually is going with the uh, new system that we're going to get for Halo Infinite's multiplayer customization. So that's going to be the big drive for Halo Infinite. It's going to be the customization, the fact that it's free to play as well, which is just absolutely massive. Something that Halo definitely needed to do for sure to kind of bring more people in because that's the one thing too, like I talked about in the previous video, talking about my greatest fear with Halo is that people are not going to really want to play Halo Infinite because it's Halo. They know what it's all about. They've played Halo before. Their dad showed them in it back in 20, oh, you know, 2007 or something like that, you know? And so, you know, there's a, uh, people have kind of made their minds up about Halo, but when it's free to play, people are going to be like, well, I have nothing else to lose except for some time. And why not give it a go? Right? Especially if it's a new hot thing, everyone's playing it. Halo is not exactly in the position either to charge like a full price kind of experience like you have like with Call of Duty. That boy had the shotgun on this map. Halo is a bit of an underdog right now with this current state, especially in the multiplayer side of things. And it's gonna be interesting to see how people three positions themselves to, you know, get a good amount of people back into Halo, playing the game and stuff like that. I mean, they're certainly making some right moves. It just kind of depends uh, how well they keep up with those good moves and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Oh, get that kill. Yes, we got that kill that's made. I get the kill on this boy right here. I got this guy right here. There we go. We got. I can still shoot your toes. I can see your toes. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on Halo Infinite multiplayer? What's something that you would like to see that maybe might be a little bit of a hot take, like we talked about in this video, saying like my hot take of saying that like we should you should just have one ranked mode and everything else be social to kind of consolidate the player base and kind of really double down on the experience of both of those being competitive and social, but. That's just my opinion, though. But let me know in the comment section down below what your guys' thoughts on the whole thing as well. As we get dominated by my team going terrible on the guy quitting. Let me know in the comment section down below. Check out the video on the screen right here if you missed any content from me recently. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.